Hello and welcome to another Factorio tutorial video. I'm Exterminator and thanks for joining me. So, uh, last time we did a tutorial on the oil industry, uh, setting that up. And after that, usually I kind of like to head towards blue science. I think that, I think that's usually a good goal to set, is head towards blue science, you know, and then robots, uh, logistic system, all that. So, uh, one, one of the things you need for Blue Science is Advanced Circuits. So we're going to start with that. This tutorial is going to be on Advanced Circuits, on setting them up. And uh, you may notice right away this is not our tutorial map. And the reason I do this is because this map is, uh, I mean, it, it's already established. I'm like, in the end game, I already have the rocket defense, as you can see. And I chose this just because it already has the resources needed to, like, uh, do demonstrations and you know in the tutorial map it would take forever for me to like gather this stuff and I don't want to do that um, you know just for the tutorial I mean I I mean don't get me wrong I love doing these but uh but it's a lot easier doing it this way I will add an advanced circuit setup on the tutorial map of course so we can continue using it but for this I'm going to use this map so advanced circuits uh, they require three items and those are electronic circuits, plastic bar, and copper cable. Uh, it requires four cables, two plastic bars, and two electronic circuits. Now, they can be, for me, they used to be a little annoying to make, um, but now that I kind of have experience with the game, they're really not, and, you know, that's kind of why I'm doing this tutorial, to show off that they're really not that hard to set up and make though they do take quite a lot of resources um, in the end. You, you'll see. They, <laughs> if, if you want to make any decent number of them, and you will need quite a few of them because they're used for a lot of things, um, they, they do consume a decent amount of resources. So I have three setups here. This one, this one, and this one over here. I want to uh, note really quick a quick disclaimer. This setup here and this setup over here are not mine. Um, I did not come up with them. This one I found on Reddit a few days ago. And this one, I think it was made by Fish Sandwich. Um, I think it's kind of patented as the Fish Sandwich Advanced Circuit build. And, uh, and yeah, I'm using them for demonstration purposes because they are both really good. But um, I did not come up with them. So I just want to um, state that. And uh, this one here, which I'll explain in a minute, this one is really good for when you have robots, as you can see, we have our requester chests and our provider chests. But uh, before that, I would not really suggest using this one because it can get really funky if you try to use belts with it. If you even can, I've never tried it with belts. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so we're going to start with this one here. And this is one, I mean, I guess you could say I came up with it. It's really not like anything groundbreaking. <laughs> I just decided to do it. And uh and yeah, so I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we have our plastic coming in here from up in our oil production area, well, which is right here, I think. Yeah, over here. And uh, it goes all the way down, and we have it merging in to one belt on one side here, and the other side of the belt is our circuits, which, as you can see, are pretty much dried up because we don't have copper, but that's a different story. That's not what I'm demonstrating. Um, but yeah, the circuits come down on this far side over here um, just from these assemblers. These assemblers go over here to these, and uh, which we'll cover in some episode, not this one. But uh, these come down here, and then they merge onto the other half of the belt with the plastic. So the plastic and circuits come down here and split and then they go down both sides here so these guys can grab them and then we have them insert the finished product our advanced circuits onto this middle belt here and that's just put into provider chest or you can have it belted wherever you need it um, so uh, so yeah and then all we have left is the copper cable and how I decided to do it is to have the copper running on the outsides, the copper cable machines on the outside. And <laughs> I decided to do one 
a cable machine for every two advanced circuit machines, this is way overkill. You do not need nearly this many. The, uh, the correct ratio is about 8 to 1, so you can support 8 advanced circuit machines off of one copper cable machine. Um, obviously, if they're the same level of assembling machine, it won't really work if this is like a level 1 and these are all level 2s and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so this is way overkill. <laughs> you know, I have for 2, 4, 6, 8, for 8 assemblers doing it, I have four assemblers for this. So I have a two to one ratio, which is obviously four times the amount you need. And really the reason I did this is symmetry and, um, you know, just so they're symmetrical. And usually I would not suggest putting cables on belts like ever, if you can avoid it. Um, it's just really not good for throughput. And like most things that use them require a lot of them. These require four, and uh, you know these require three, um, so on and so forth. So it's usually not a good idea to put them on belts. So that's the other reason I did it this way. But again, I mean, if you want to do this, I don't really think it hurts anything unless you're like super big on all the right ratios. Um, you know, I mean, this has been working great for me so far, and uh, and yeah, so you can do something like this, and again, you can vary it however you want. You know, you could. Uh, you could have the plastic and the circuits going down one middle belt and you could have these insert into these two side belts and then have them merge or go off in two different directions. You know, you can vary this really however you want. I'm just trying to show the basic idea, um, you know, so it doesn't seem too overwhelming. They're, they're really pretty simple. You know, once you get your oil done, which we did in the last tutorial, so if you follow that and you have your oil setup done, then it's really pretty easy. I mean, these are like point and click to get done in the circuits, you know, they're really easy. Um, one very quick thing is uh, for circuits, this is a good setup. The ratio is about three to two, so three copper cable factories to two circuit factories. This is a really standard um, run of the mill setup here. But it works really well. The ratios are right, and it works almost always if you have copper and iron. But, uh, but yeah, just if, you, if you're having problems setting that up, go with something like this. Um, it works really well. So let's move on to this guy. This is the one I found on Reddit. Um, someone posted. It's, uh, it's really cool. It's pretty much like the same exact thing, um, to be completely honest with you. Um, but... The, the only difference is the ratio is right for the cables to advanced circuit machines. And the other difference is they're putting cables on a belt, which, you know, again, personally, I don't like doing that. But for something like this, where it's a pretty exact ratio, I don't really think it hurts. Um, it, it still seems to work pretty good. And, you know, the reason I haven't connected this, I'll just explain it. And I don't want to run all the resources down here and stuff. Uh, it's it's really straightforward. So you have your two copper cable machines, one for every eight of these, and then you have your copper coming in to feed these. Um, you know, this can go any which way. I use the belts coming this way. You know, if you wanted, you could have... Um, you could have... Well, I don't know if you saw that pop up. That's a little scary. Um, you could have the uh, copper coming in this way... You know, so on and so forth. You could do it pretty much whatever fits with how your base is laid out. And uh, one thing I probably wouldn't suggest is having cable like over here or whatever and having a long-handed inserter because these are going to be pretty much producing full time. And I don't think a long-handed inserter, um, since they move at the same speed as a normal inserter, I don't think they could support it. You could do like two or even three long-handed inserters. Well, not three because this one's here, but, uh, you know, you can vary it however you want. Okay, so you have your your cable coming in here. And then you have your um, circuits and your plastic coming on each of these belts, which is pretty much exactly like how this one is. And then you have these guys inserting onto a middle belt. 
So this one is very, very similar to this one. The only difference being the cables are going on a belt and you actually have the correct ratios. So that's really the only difference. And again, you know, you can vary this um, however you want, as long as it, you know, works. And, uh, and yeah, now once you get robots set up, this won't really work, as I said, it won't work too well without robots, and the problem is you pretty much need <laughs> advanced circuits to get robots because um, some of the research required uh, to make them function properly, to make the robots and the logistics system function properly, requires blue science, which obviously needs circuits. But once you get this set up, it is a really, really neat build. It's really easy to do. And it looks like really kind of crazy with all the stuff on. Um, I could turn these off and it makes it a little easier. So this one here in the middle is your cable factory. And again, we have two, four, six, and eight advanced circuit factories. And you have your long head inserters going into each one, um, pulling from here. And now you remember over here, I said long hand inserters probably won't be fast enough. The reason is because from over here, they would be pulling the copper or the copper cable from a belt. The reason these work here is because you're going from an assembling machine to an assembling machine, which pretty much count as like, like containers, like boxes. So once you get your inserter stack size bonus, that applies here. So that's why these can still work. Um, and, and then you just have your copper requested a crest or chest and again you can move this kind of wherever you want and it places here so you have one of those going into each of these and then you just have your request your chest to request the circuits and the plastic and two of these share one so you have them in each corner here and then they just insert and again normal inserters will probably do the trick for two reasons one because of the stack size bonus and two these things take eight seconds to make and the inserter only has to insert um, four items from that chest, the circuits and the plastic, um, in eight seconds. And even if you didn't have a stack size bonus, that would probably be about enough time. But even with like one stack size bonus research, that'll be probably more than fast enough. I mean, you can use fast inserters. There's really no reason not to, but... uh I just wanted to show that these will work. And then, you know, kind of the opposite, you just have your provider chest on the outside, two assemblers share one, the things go in here, and you're good to go. So this is just really cool. My favorite part is it's symmetrical, except for this chest here. But uh, yeah, it works really well. And then, you know, you can just blueprint it if you want and just stamp it down, copy and paste it. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's there's not much more to explain. I mean, I could go into more depth with this, but it really is quite simple. Um, once you get the hang of it, you know, once you see some setups and kind of get the idea in your head, it, uh, it, it works quite well. Any of these really, um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think, I really think that's about it. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward and and you know, I mean, again, you could rearrange this however you want, as long as it works. Um, you know, if you wanted, you could, uh, you could like place these guys inside. Um, well, there's obviously not room there, but you could like place these guys inside and have them, you know, like have these be your cable factories if you want. And I'm just doing this like off the top of my head. So like, that's what I'm saying. You can vary it. And then you could just have them like, um, going out this way and then have the circuit machines on the outside and just have a belt for the circuits and plastic on the outside. And then another one, another one farther out to put these on and use long handed inserters, um, or you could put these again at the front like these are, but on the inside and just have the belts go straight out. Um, you know, you can, again, you can vary it however you want, however works with your base, but that's really just the basic principles. And I mean, I do hope this helped. Obviously, 
if you already kind of know how the game works, this is probably a pointless tutorial for you because you've seen this stuff or you already know how to set these up just fine. But again, I aim for these tutorials to be for very beginners, and I know when I first started, setting up advanced circuits were um, really kind of a little bit overwhelming. They were a pain, and my build sucked horribly. So I'm just uh, I'm hoping these can kind of help people out, and I really think that's going to be it. So. You know, as always, if you have any questions, uh, you know, or feedback, suggestions, whatever it may be, definitely post it down in the comments. I always read them and, uh, you know, reply to them if I can help. So I think that's going to be it. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I do hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and take care.